kids, welcome to another exciting Sunday. This week we're doing our final lesson for the Meals with Jesus series. Um, but don't despair, we'll have something new coming up. But today we will be making an exciting snack. This one is called Animal Toast. <laughs> we will not eat animals on toast. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> it's silly animal toast, okay? So we're going to have some bread. Mm -hmm. which is slightly toasted and then some fruit over here got some blueberries um, and then i just chopped some red grapes over here into like little round slices but Yummy. you can use bananas or strawberries whatever you have around the house and, and finally peanut, peanut butter. butter you can Yummy. also use chocolate spread if you have some chocolate spread would be great too so we'll be using peanut butter today so before we get started into everything today let us go into a type of games. So here is today's game. Have fun. Hi guys, here is another fun game for you. Can you guess what these sounds are? Ariel, how's your animal toast coming along? It's going pretty well. I'm trying to think about what animal I will put on mm, it. I'm also making my background here with peanut butter and um, I think I'll make a teddy bear, but we'll see you just now. Mm. Before we go any further, let's get ready to worship God. And as we sing this song, I want you to give God your whole heart and forget about everything that's distracting you and everything else around you and just focus on Him. When there's an ocean of doubt in front of me And my back's up against the wall I know it's an opportunity For my God to show His heart And it may look impossible in the natural But I know that it's not Cause I know that my God will come
everyone it's time for some food for thought again and today as i'm talking to you guys i'm busy eating a delicious croissant that i got from a yummy bakery just around the corner from our house now one holiday i watched a movie where this woman was baking croissants and it seemed like it only takes a few minutes you know roll it in the shape put it in the oven and you're done and so i thought in this holiday of mine I'm going to make croissants from scratch. I'm not going to cheat and buy the really frozen ones and put them in the oven. I'm going to start from the very beginning and do it all myself. Now, this did not take only a few minutes. In fact, it took several days. Because <laughs> first, when your dough is ready, you have to roll it out very, very thinly in a particular shape with measurements and everything. It's very precise science. And then you have to spread butter all over it and roll it up in a certain way and then put it in the fridge and chill it overnight. Then the next day, you do all of that again and chill it overnight one more time. And then you do all of that again. And then once you are able, after these few days, to roll your dough into the croissant crescent shapes, you're still not ready to pop them into the oven. When you do that, you have to still let them rise for another two to three hours. And then only can you put them in the oven and wait for them to bake and then eat them. So croissants actually take a lot of time and you have to be really, really patient and you have to persevere before you can eat the deliciousness of baked croissants. Now, why am I telling all of you about croissants and baking them? Well, it made me think a little bit about our lives as followers of Jesus. When we put our trust in Jesus, we don't become perfect people and our hearts change instantly. No, it takes time. So although God immediately sees us as if we are perfect, he sees us as holy when we put our faith in Jesus, it takes time for our hearts to change and for our lives to look more like Jesus' life. It's something that we have to keep working at every single day. And we have to be patient and we have to persevere. But the amazing thing is, I had to bake the croissants all by myself. But following Jesus is not something we do all by ourselves. We have the Holy Spirit, who is also God, and he helps us. He changes our hearts. He helps us to stay patient and to persevere, even when things get really, really tough. And he makes us look more like Jesus. So I hope that you all have been enjoying this series. And I hope that you walk with Jesus every day of your life in patience and perseverance. Wasn't that an amazing food for thought? I hope you can take it in and apply it in your daily life somehow. We are doing pretty well with our snacks here, yeah? our silly animal toast. But we won't show oh, you yet. Okay, you have to you wait have, till the end. <laughs> absolutely. You have to wait till the end to see what they are. But now we're going to go into a time where we can just pause, be present and focus on Jesus. So get comfortable and enjoy this video. For today's moment to pause and be present, I want to read a few verses of a psalm to you. Listen closely and think about anything that catches your attention. I'm going to read from Psalm 116 verses 1 to 7. I love the Lord, for He heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because He turned His ear to me, I will call on Him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, He saved me. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. Today's scripture reading is from Revelation chapter 3, verse 20 to 21. Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. I will eat with that person and they will eat with me. Here is what I will do for anyone who has victory over sin. I will give that person the right to sit with me on my throne in the same way I had victory. Then I sat down with my father on his throne. If you wanted to organize the best party ever, what would you do? 
Would you organize jumping castles? Would you get a rock band? How about a popcorn machine, a foam machine, maybe some Nerf guns or a makeup station? Would you have lots and lots of sweets and chocolates? Or maybe you would organize a pool party. Or how does horse rides for everyone out into the sunset sound to you? Well, in today's lesson, the last lesson in our Meals with Jesus series, we are going to hear about a story that Jesus told about the greatest party ever. And the lesson about this party is not only for the people Jesus was speaking to, it is also for us. So let's take a look. The passage that we can find this story from is in Luke chapter 14, verses 15 to 24. Now at this point in Luke's gospel, Jesus is at an important Pharisee's house for supper and all the other Pharisees there are fighting about getting the best seat. Does this ring a bell? Do you remember this lesson from a few weeks ago? Well, Jesus taught them at the supper about putting others first and not themselves and loving others, even those who can't pay anything back to them in return. And a few weeks ago, when we looked at that, we also learned to do this just as Jesus has put us first, even though we could never pay him anything back in return. And he put us first by dying on the cross in our place. Now, I can imagine at this point that things at this supper were pretty tense after Jesus' teaching. So just after that, one of the Pharisees tried to break the ice a little, and he said this to Jesus. He said, blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Now, God's future kingdom, where everything is restored and made perfect, is often described as a huge banquet, a massive feast filled with only goodness and where God's family can feast together with him forever. But I think what this man actually was trying to say was this, blessed are people like us who are religious and respected and follow all of God's rules because we will feast in the kingdom of God. And it's almost like this Pharisee didn't understand a single word of what Jesus had just taught. He, like all the other Pharisees there, thought that because he obeyed all the rules, he naturally belonged to God's family and therefore he deserved a seat at God's table. But Jesus responded to what this man said by telling them a story. This story is called a parable. And Jesus often used parables to teach people more about himself, so who he is, and the reason why he came to earth, so his mission. Jesus told a parable about a man who prepared a great banquet, and this man invited many guests. This was the type of party that you wanted to be at and you wanted to be seen at. And when the time for the banquet came, he ordered his servant to tell everyone that he invited they must come because everything is ready. So it's almost like when your mom or dad has been preparing supper for everyone in the house and then they call to say, dinner is ready, come and sit down. Now in those days, the day of a party was given long in advance so you could book it off in your diary, but the actual time was only given on the day. So everyone who was invited would have already said yes to the invitation. And all they had to do was rock up as soon as they were called to come. We would expect that this is what they would have done, right? But it's not what they did. These people were all invited to a great party, but instead of accepting the invitation and going, they made excuses. Lame excuses. One man said this, he said, I just bought a field. I must go and see it. Please excuse me. But who buys a field and then goes to look at it? It's almost like saying, I can't come to your party. I just bought a house and I need to go and check it has a roof. Not a good excuse, is it? Well, another man said this, he said, I just bought five yoke of oxen, that's five pairs, so 10 oxen, and I have to go and try them out. Please excuse me. Now I can understand maybe buying one ox before trying it out for its to test its strength, 
but who would buy 10 and then only test them? A third man said, I just got married, I can't come. But I'm pretty sure his wife could have joined him at this great party. So perhaps it's not that he couldn't come, Maybe it's more that he didn't want to come. It's not like he checked his diary and then all of a sudden saw, whoops, I just realized I just got married. <laughs> now fields, oxen, wives or marriages, they are all good and important things. It wasn't wrong for these people to be busy with these things. But these good things stopped them from going to a great party. And how do you think the master of the house, the one who organized this great feast, felt? Well, let's read a bit further. The servant came back and he reported to his master. And then the owner of the house became angry and he ordered his servant, go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind and the lame. And then the, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there's still room. Now imagine what the Pharisees hearing the story at this point must have been thinking. Poor people, the cripple, the lame, the blind, they didn't seem like they were people who deserved to be invited to a fancy party. So when the people who were first invited didn't accept the invitation, the least likely people were given the invitation to come instead. And then when they had come, the master told his servant that he should go into the roads and the country lanes and compel everyone there to come in so that his house will be full. He did not want an empty seat. And then he said this, I tell you, not one of those who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. Now the Pharisees hearing this parable must have been shocked they who thought they deserved the most to get this invitation to the banquet in God's kingdom, they were being warned here that being important and being busy with important things does not mean that you will automatically enter God's family and belong to his kingdom. The warning for them was this, that if they let good and important things distract them from the most important thing, which is to trust fully in Jesus, they will miss out entirely and not taste the feast at the banquet at all. Now, what does this mean for us today? Jesus is like the master of the house. He is like the host of the banquet in this parable. And one day when he returns to earth to finally fix everything that's been broken by sin, he will host a great celebration in the book of Revelation, we read that this will be like a marriage feast. And this will be in heaven for everyone who belongs to Jesus. The greatest thing about this party is not all the things that will be there. It is who will be there. At this party, the people there will be able to enjoy and love and worship Jesus together forever. Now, like the master invited his servants, I mean the guests, not his servants, the guests, <laughs> Jesus invites us too. He invites everyone, not only rich, clever, good, important and fancy people. He invites everyone. So this invitation is for you and it's for me and it's for everyone around you. It's for everyone at your school, everyone in Joburg, everyone in South Africa and everyone in the world. But the warning in the parable is for us as well. Not everyone who is invited to Jesus' banquet will end up actually being at his banquet. Just like the first guests made excuses when the time for the banquet came, we can also let good and important things distract us from accepting Jesus' invitation. We might think that doing well at school, uh, doing well in our sport and our cultural activities, being a leader, hanging out with friends, spending time with family, doing all the fun things we love to do, that those things are more important right now. And although these things are good and important, we can be so focused on them 
that we miss out on the greatest thing ever, and that is knowing Jesus. Jesus is infinitely better than any of these things. Nothing on earth can make us truly happy. No one on earth can love us perfectly and nothing on earth will last forever. But Jesus, He loves us perfectly. He loves us forever and He can make our hearts truly full of joy. We might think that oh, we're still young. There's still lots of time to respond to Jesus. We first have to finish school, have some fun, be successful, uh, become popular, whatever it is that your dreams or your goals are. And maybe you think when I achieve those things, then I'll take the time to respond to Jesus. But just like Jesus warned in the parable, only those who have actually said yes to his invitation will be at the banquet. No matter how busy we are with good and important things or how good we are at sticking to God's rules and doing all the right things, we only get to be at Jesus' banquet if we trust him fully. And if we say no to his invitation, well, then we will be separated from God forever and we will be punished for our sin. But the amazing thing is, that Jesus wants us to say yes, even though there is nothing we can offer him back. Jesus is God. He is the king of the universe. He's the most glorious, the most holy, the most majestic, most important person ever. And we are like the cripple, the poor and the lame in the parable. Just like they had nothing to offer the host of the banquet, and they didn't deserve to be invited to this banquet, we also can't offer anything to Jesus that he needs because there's nothing that Jesus needs. And we also don't deserve to be invited by him. But in the parable, the master still sent his servant to invite the poor, those who couldn't walk properly, those who couldn't see, and he wanted his house to be full. We read that he told his servant, to compel the people in the country roads to come into his house. Now to compel means to convince or persuade. And this shows us just how much the master wanted these people to attend his banquet. And in the same way, Jesus doesn't need us to say yes to him, but he wants us to. He compels us to. In fact, Jesus wants you so much that he gave up his life for you so that your sin wouldn't keep you out of God's house and out of his family anymore. Jesus paid the price for your sin that you actually deserve to pay, even though he didn't deserve it and he never sinned. And all of this so that you and I can have a seat at God's table and belong to him forever. So, to end off our Meals with Jesus series, where we've seen how much Jesus loves sinners and how he came to find and rescue those who are lost from God, I want to ask you a question. What is your answer to Jesus' invitation? Will you say yes or will you say no? That is a great, great lesson about the greatest party ever. We are here done with our meal prep. What do you have on your toast on today? I made a teddy bear. His <laughs> name is uh, Theodore, or Teddy for short, the bear. <laughs> oh, that's very cool. For me, I have two little tortoises. <laughs> They're very round, but <laughs> I think they can pass as tortoises, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for watching this entire Meals with Jesus series. We really hope that you've gotten to know Jesus better and that you know more about His mission on earth to come and find and save lost sinners. And anyone who turns to Him will be rescued. We're gonna eat our animal toast and we hope that you enjoy the challenge of the week in the next slide. We'll see you in our next series. Bye. Thank you.